Welcome to the OBM Podcast. This is a platform where awareness, new perspectives, healing, and transparent conversations take place. Every mom has a motherhood journey that is unique, yet no mom is alone. So sit back, relax, open your minds, and steady your hearts to hear a mom's journey through motherhood. Hey, sister friends, welcome to another episode of the OBM podcast. Today, we have an amazing guest. Her name is Nakia jacobs Kwan. But before we get started into her talking about her journey of motherhood, we are going to have her share a bit about herself because she is an individual first before all of the other titles that she has. So Nakia, please share about yourself. Hey guys, my name is Nikia Jacobs Kwan, but I'm okay with you calling me Nikki. Nikki. Um, <laughs> I have three beautiful girls, a husband, um, a huge family, and I do a lot of ministry work, wife work, mother work, all of the above. Um, <laughs> I am um, a business owner. I own a beautiful business called uh, Paparazzi Accessories. I'm an independent consultant with the rank of premier director. Okay, girl. I've been doing it for about four and a half years, and I believe that I love it. Mm. I believe that I love it. From what I know, I can tell you do. I believe that I do. (laughs) (laughs) So if you're looking for those beautiful accessories, come see me. Uh, (laughs) I'll speak about that in a minute, honey. But besides that, I am um a transparent mom i'm a friend i am a sister i am <laughs> all things to everybody mm. and so um i'm glad to be here today good to talk to you today and i and we we are very excited to have you yeah, really appreciate. really um what what word i want to use i, I guess what my kids say the ooey gooey but oh, you know the <laughs> okay the ooey gooey uh, of your journey of motherhood. Let's okay. talk about that. So let's let's go straight into it. Go ahead, I'm ready. Okay. So uh, motherhood started for me pretty young. Okay. Um, I became a mother my sophomore year in college. Okay. I was 20 years old. As a matter of fact, I had just turned 20 six days before my daughter was born. Wow. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and so. Um, motherhood came with its challenges because I was so young, but it came. And then, um, about eight years later, I met my husband and, um, he came with a daughter as well. So then I became a mom of two. And then about five years after that, um, I became a mother of three. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was a, what they call the old hen. (laughs) because I had children a little older but that's okay because I believe I got the best of both worlds because I had a baby young and then I had a baby older okay um and so now (laughs) my baby had a baby oh yeah and so now I'm somebody's honey because I'm (laughs) never going to be old enough to be anyone's (laughs) grandmother uh, I love the name, honey. So, so I'm a honey. Nice. And she's my honey bun. Oh, yes. And so um, never any boys. I don't even have any brothers. So I wouldn't know what to do with them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very glad that I have all these beautiful girls. Um, and I saw a lot because I don't have any brothers. Um, so I saw how to raise girls. Okay. Plus. I'm the oldest of four girls, and my next sister is six years younger than me. Okay. So we are far enough apart to where I feel like I had a hand mm. in raising her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I got a lot of uh, what do you call it? experience? Mm. Sideline experience. Sideline. Experience. That's what we call it. Okay. Yeah. So all of your children, what are the ages? They are 19, 14, and five. How was their birth? How was it for them? Okay. For you, excuse me. For me. And them, sorry. For you (laughs) and them. How was it for y'all? Okay. (laughs) Well, 
the first one mm -hmm. um again i was in college so it was like wow. um and i ended up um trying to push her out mm -hmm. not working so ended up having a c-section gotcha with her um and she was my 10 pound baby my 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 yes. 10 pounds very first one. okay yeah okay and then um let's see my youngest okay was uh what you call our rainbow baby oh. she was she's very much so our our miracle wow. i had um three miscarriages back to back three three and then um, wow. we were actually all set up and getting ready to have a hysterectomy. Wow. And um, went to the hospital, got all, you know. You're kidding. Serious. Undressed, you know, they put the gown on you, you're ready for surgery. <gasps> and they came in, it's six o'clock in the morning. Uh huh. They came in, the anesthesiologist says, no. No way. We're not going to do it. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> because um, if anyone knows me, I'm not a morning person <laughs> at all. <laughs> and so for me to get up and get out of my bed and be at the hospital yeah. at 530 a.m. And now you're telling me, nope, um, there's something wrong. <laughs> wow. So um, he just kept saying, no, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. Um, my blood pressure spiked. Yeah. And they just kept telling me, no, they wouldn't do it. And wow. my doctor came in Jesus, and Jesus. said, uh, you have to go home. And I said, what do you mean I have to go home? I came here for you to get rid of the insides and you need to take the inside. Do, do your job. You know, and he told me, no, you have to go home. He didn't say anything else. What? So I went home angry. Um. Because at that point, you know, when you have so many traumatic experiences back to back, yeah. um, your mind says, okay, I have to uh, set myself up or psych myself out mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. be able to go into this surgery. Right. And so I had done all of that for years. And then... Um, to be told, no, you got to go home. I was angry. I was upset. I was, you know, my husband didn't really know what to do, what to say mm -hmm. to me at that point. So there was no comfort there. Um, friends didn't really know what to say. No one really knew what to say. So I was at home in my bed, just looking at walls trying to figure out what to do and um my doctor called me and he said well what are you doing and I said I'm in my bed he yeah. says um have you had your period and I said no he said well you should take a pregnancy test and I said yeah. For what? Because my mindset said, mm -hmm. I always lose babies. So why? Mm -hmm. What's the point? He said, I think you should take a test. And so I took the test and it came back positive. And I said, what? And then my mind said, but you're going to lose the baby anyway. Mm -hmm. And I cried. And I remember calling my mom and saying, well, I'm pregnant, but I'm going to lose the baby anyway. And she said, no, you don't have to. Mm. You won't. And so we decided not to tell anyone, not even closest friends, mm -hmm. no one. We didn't tell anyone. Mm. And then um, it was so funny because we hit 12 weeks. We were actually on a cruise. <laughs> with some friends yeah, yeah yeah and my mom had told us before we went on a cruise she said i don't want you to go on this cruise mm. don't go because remember she knew and no one else did right so she's like no 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 don't go don't go she was like you're gonna go out and, and party and have and i'm like no i'm mm. not i'm gonna be fine yeah 
So we went on a cruise and the day I turned 12 weeks, we were like in the middle of our cruise and we were out and just having a good time. And I had forgotten my water bottle. <laughs> I need water. Oh my God. And I'm like feeling lightheaded. Like, oh, my water. Mama. And so my friends are like, what's <laughs> the urgency? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> so finally, my husband said, She's pregnant and she doesn't have any water. I'm like, no. <laughs> We're supposed to keep this with ourselves. Right. Oh my goodness. But it was the 12th week and he said, You said we had to wait to 12 weeks. <laughs> I did. I kept the promise. <laughs> and so the friends were like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> but yeah i came back from the cruise and went to the doctor and there was this healthy heartbeat and everything yes. was great and months later here comes this little girl and she was a scheduled c-section okay she was a schedule well they call it that because I went to the doctor that morning uh -huh. and he said, okay, come this afternoon to the hospital and we're going to do your C-section. And you didn't even know, girl. I didn't even know. <laughs> it was time. And so oh my goodness. That was that. Yeah. Um, the births okay. were C-sections. Now, afterwards, there was a lot of trauma with me. Hmm. It was... Um, I don't know if you want to hear all of this right now. Oh, honey, we, I need you to share. We ready. Okay. We ready. So, okay. <laughs> you know, you're in the hospital with a C-section. They keep you for four days. Yes. And then they send you home. Yes. So they kept me for four days. Then they sent me home. And um, the next night, I was sitting in the living room with my oldest playing Uno. Okay. The baby and my husband had gone into the bedroom. They were going to sleep. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, um, I felt like I was underwater. Mm. Something was happening. My daughter, who was 13 at the time, yeah. had to call 911 to get the ambulance to come to wow. pick me up and take me right back to the hospital. So you were and struggling I, breathing. I was struggling breathing. Um, I couldn't get any oxygen I nothing mm. and so they ended up telling me at the end of all of that I was in the hospital for 10 days mm. four of which I was intubated um so I do not remember those four days Jesus. at all wow um and so after the 10th day you know yeah. everything kind of cleared up and I went home they ended up telling me that I had double pneumonia and severe sepsis sepsis wow mm -hmm. and this was four days after labor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow yeah so i've had some um <laughs> what mm -hmm. i call traumatic experiences um i did two years later end up having the hysterectomy okay so okay. i won't be having any more children mm -hmm. and i'm pretty happy about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it really traumatized you. Yeah, um, because it seems to be a whole lot for me. Mm. So I'm okay with not having any more. Yeah, respect. Yeah. And we have to do what's best for our bodies. Right. Yeah. Right. For sure. I get it. <laughs> I really do. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the OBM Podcast. We look forward to you joining us next week to hear a story from a mom near you. So until we hear each other again, please be sure to take it easy, be blessed, and smile. Remember, you can enjoy life.